Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial covers using SPI devices with the Arduino. We will discuss the SPI bus layout, we will learn how to make connections to the Arduino, we will discuss the signals on the SPI bus and we will look at the uh, SPI library that comes with the Arduino IDE. SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface Bus. Um, the SPI bus is fundamentally different from the I2C bus because it uses more than just two lines to communicate. If you remember, the I2C bus just had a data line and a clock line and the, the uh, devices that were connected to the I2C bus, they were distinguished via device addresses that were uh, transmitted um, through the I2C bus. Here with the uh, SPI bus we instead use uh, slave select lines, you see that here, so this is the master, that would be the Arduino, and then for each of the uh, slave devices that are connected we have an individual slave select line with which we can essentially turn on each of these devices to uh, listen to the uh, signals that are on the bus. Then we have uh, three lines that constitute the data bus. Um, one is the clock line and then we have the master out slave in and the master in slave out lines and they are for communications in both directions. You see immediately the advantage here over the I2C bus because we can have uh, communications in both directions at the same time with the I2C bus that would not be possible. The disadvantage, of course, is, is that we have many more lines on the bus in comparison to the I2C. It's interesting to point out that many devices come with a choice of SPI or I2C interface, sometimes even on the same chip, which allows to choose what interface to use. The SPI library that comes with the Arduino uses pins 13, 12 and 11 for the data lines. So we have the clock on 13, the master in slave out on 12 and the master out slave in on 11 and then often uh, number 10 pin number 10 is used as the uh, slave select uh, pin however this can be varied one can essentially use all the digital pins um, as slave select line here we see an example of a typical transmission from the master to the slave. So we see here that the signals on the uh, four uh, bus lines were transmitting three characters, capital F and then A and B. And the uh, process starts by uh, taking the slave select line low and that signals to the slave that now it is time to receive on the master out slave in pin and if the slave has to send something back then it also can configure the uh, master in slave outline as an output. The next step is, is that the clock goes briefly high for each bit that is being transmitted. At the same time the master out slave in line goes either low or high depending on whether we have a 0 or a 1 on the bus. And that now we do 8 times for each of the bytes. Then after that there is a break and um, when the master considers the transmission over then the slave select line goes back high which concludes the transmission. The practical implementation of SPI communication with the Arduino unfortunately is not so straightforward. Uh, the polarity of the signals that we just saw can change and so can also the phase with which the data bits are being transmitted relative to the uh, clock signal. Uh, we see that down here I, I went to the Arduino reference where the SPI library is being discussed and so there's a lot of detail about it and so down here we see there is, an, uh, there is part of this entry on the SPI mode. There are actually uh, four different modes that SPI can uh, run in and so it simply defines what the clock polarity is and the clock phase. So whether a uh, bit is being transmitted when the clock goes high or when it goes low. 
That can sometimes confuse um, communication with SPI devices and so if it does not work then it's definitely time to consider the uh, reading the data sheet and figuring out what SPI mode the device that you are trying to communicate with is expecting. Okay, so this is uh, this mode is actually set here with the set data mode method of the SPI library. You can have here a look at the functions that are or the, the methods that are part of the SPI library. We have here begin and end. With this we can start the SPI communication and, and end it. Uh, and then here we can set the bit order. That's actually another ambiguity with uh, SPI transmission whether the uh, least significant or the most significant byte are being or, or bits are being transmitted first. So all this needs to be um, found out via consultation of the data sheet for a particular device that is being SPI controlled. Then with the clock divider method we essentially def define the speed of the SPI bus, of the SPI transmission. Uh, data mode we know already and then we have here finally the transfer method that is the method that is being used to actually transmit a byte to the device and then there is a bunch of special um, methods for the Arduino DUE which we are not discussing here. This concludes our tutorial using SPI devices with the Arduino. Thanks for watching.